Hi, Kat. I am super, super, super happy to have you here at Busy Moms Yoga and Wellness. So this is actually like my first video of uh, interview of the series, and I'm super pumped. I'm actually like giddy about it because nutrition, as you know, is one of my super favorite things to talk about ever. <laughs> and actually what brought us together kind of, right? Because I met Kat and I was like, I want you to be my doula because you seem like the kind of healthy, holistic person I want supporting me. <laughs> so Kat has been there for both of my births, which is amazing. And yeah, I will never, ever, ever forget that. And I will just always have you so close to my heart forever because of that. And ever since then, we've been great friends and Kat has expanded her offerings and is now offering so much uh, with regards to nutrition. Um, and yeah, so let's hand the floor over to you and tell me a little bit more about what you do in terms of nutrition, how you support clients and kind of your journey to getting here. Like, what is your story? How did, how did you get to doing what you do now? Awesome. Thank you, Olga. I'm super happy to be here. And I feel honored that you uh, have asked me to uh, talk on your series. So thank you. Um, so yeah, a little bit about myself. I have a, a bit of an interesting background. I actually started off as an engineer and through that work um, and other work, I discovered that I really had a passion in terms of supporting uh, people. Uh, and specifically once I got pregnant myself about uh, a little over 10 years ago now, I started being very passionate about supporting mothers. So my journey started uh, on the mother side of things when I myself got supported by a doula in my first pregnancy because I was told that my baby was breech uh, and that I would need a C-section. So I got really scared about all that and I ended up reaching out to a doula and she really helped me to uh, accept things just as they were and, and really helped me to... I just felt very supported through that journey. And after I gave birth, a vaginal birth of my breech baby, I decided for sure that I wanted to support women um, in a very similar way. And so I've been a doula for almost 10 years now. And through that journey, I also realized that um, I had something missing in terms of how I was supporting people because I was always very passionate about the health side of things and the nutrition side. And I really felt that every time I would have a client um, that even though my role was a doula, that I really had a tendency to focus on nutrition and ask them, you know, what they were taking supplements wise and what they were eating. And, and that side of things was, was really something that I would dig uh, with my clients. Um, and nutrition had always been something that I was very, very passionate about, not in a professional on a professional side, but more as a, a personal passion. So I decided to uh, continue my journey in terms of support. And I went to do my, um, I went to do a diploma in registered holistic nutrition. Uh, I've been doing that for a few years and I have been able to support women in both the nutrition and the doula world. And so how I've managed to do that is I support uh, people in the birth context a little bit less now. So I don't go to births as often, but I do prenatal workshops, uh, postpartum workshops that focus really on nutrition and well-being. Uh, and I also teach at the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition and I teach pediatrics uh, specifically. Awesome. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that. I love to hear people's journeys and stories because it's crazy. Like certain things in life just just keep tapping on our, on our door. We're just like, Hey, you're actually into this. Why don't you explore it more? And then, mm. you know, other things in life are like, that's not reasonable as a career. And then like life changes and the world changes. I feel like the world is so much more accepting of holistic kind of ways to well being now. And people are actually mm. searching this out. So I feel like it's like the perfect time to be advising people because they're open to it. Like people actually want to listen to this now. Yeah. A lot more demand for sure. Yeah, exactly. I feel like the demand was there, but it wasn't conscious. And now there's like this conscious demand, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Let's talk about, let's do some myth busting. Okay. So what are some three commonly held beliefs about good nutrition that are false, especially during the childbearing years, right? We have so much advice from different people. We're like trying to research, like 
How do I nourish my baby best? How do I nourish myself during breastfeeding when I'm starving every single day? Like when I was twins, Mm -hmm. you know, during my pregnancy postpartum, just like overwhelmed with how starving I was all the time and how many times a day I had to eat. Um, but anyways, I'm going too much into my own story. Um, yeah, some, some tricks and tips for moms that are trying to figure out like, what is the right thing to do? Where do I look to find out what's actually should be going (laughs) into my body right now? (laughs) (laughs) For sure. Um, so actually you, you definitely asked a lot of questions in in that. Um, so before I jump into, uh, perhaps the myth side of things, uh, one thing I do want to note is sometimes people ask like, what exactly is holistic nutrition? Um, because it, or what's the difference between just like nutrition support versus holistic nutrition versus, you know, a dietitian. So, um, just a little bit about that before we jump into sort of more like the myths and, and the support pieces. Um, so holistic nutrition, um, at the end of the day is really uh, an integrated approach or a holistic approach of the whole person. So we really uh, zone in on not just uh, the nutrition aspect and the physical body, but we really look at the state of, you know, the mental health, um, the mind, and even spirituality and how we're doing on a mindfulness level. So it's really taking um, the, the body as a whole and then exploring what is the, the diet or the nutrition um, that can support this person and what are the supplements that specifically can support that person? What are the lifestyle choices, the, the mindset, um, maybe even the spirituality that can help to contribute to the person's um, health or, or to have an optimal health? And why we call it holistic nutrition is really because we look at each person um, as a unique individual. And because ultimately everybody is biochemically uh, individual, we're all made differently. So something that will work with one person won't work with another person. And so that's why we really dig deep to look at you know, the person's health history, um, what their perhaps traumatic events have happened in their lives. Um, Maybe they have difficult relationships, maybe they don't have support, maybe they don't have access to supplements because of, you know, a money situation. So we really have to look um, in depth at the person and be able to provide recommendations that are specific to that individual. Contrary to, you know, going online and just finding this diet and and doing that diet, which Mm. is not necessarily going to work for everybody. Right. Um, And now in terms of supporting moms and, you know, on that note of, of uh, things that we read and, you know, what's true, what's not true. So I think some of the biggest myths in terms of pregnancy, specifically pregnancy nutrition, um, one of them would be the misconception that pregnant women that have to eat for two Mm. (laughs) right so I have a lot of clients that come to me yeah and they're like oh I'm pregnant I guess I have to eat for two um Mm. one thing that I would say around that is not really you're not really eating for two but you are needing to support nutrients for two um so in terms of actual uh calories per se you're only increasing your calories in a day about depending on you know the the weight of the per- the starting weight of the person and so on you're usually talking about 250 to 350 extra calories a day so you're not doubling wow. you know you're not doubling your your diet here you're not eating for two if you do start eating for two you'll likely have um you know a higher risk of gestational diabetes um, a big baby um cardiovascular disease you know depending on what you're eating but you certainly don't want to be eating for two sometimes in terms of quantity wise in terms calories but you do want to ensure that you're uh, increasing your nutrients uh, because in terms of nutrients there you are eating for two there are so many nutrients in pregnancy that uh, your requirement increases things like um, you know calcium the amount of protein you're eating um, choline folate vitamin d and so on so a lot of the nutrients do go up so it's a matter of increasing the core quality of what you're eating Mm -hmm. and not necessarily the quantity. Um, another myth that uh, I also, <laughs> I often find in my clients is they come see me and they're like, I heard that I can't eat fish, um, wh- when I'm pregnant because of the high, you know, mercury content. Yeah. Is that true? That's definitely um, something I thought. 
Yeah, and, and it's certainly something that comes up and same thing, you know, you go online and you read things in both directions. Some people say, yes, of course, eat fish. Other places, no, don't eat fish. So it gets a bit overwhelming because mm-hmm. we read different things and different people tell us, you know, different things. But at the end of the day, um, fish is um, very high in omega-3s. It has, it's a quality protein and it has a lot of other essential nutrients like vitamin D, for example. And what happens is these are nutrients that are really important for both, um, well, both yourself and baby and specifically for the baby's brain development and also uh, the eye development. And also really important for you um, as your, as your nutrients are being, you know, taken up by baby and then can impact your postpartum experience uh, Mm -hmm. as well. Now, some fish do contain higher amounts of mercury, so we can be mindful of that. Um, Things, but typically it's fish that people don't eat, like swordfish and and shark and all these, these, you know, all these fish that (laughs) we usually don't really eat anyways. So you really want to, as much as possible, stick to things like salmon, um, sorry, Sardines, um, some ver- varieties of tuna. We do have to be careful with tuna, but some varieties of tuna. But the, the best thing to do is just to eat fish that are a little bit um, are, are known to be less in mercury. And the other thing that's a little bit about a, a myth is around that is we can handle some mercury. But what happens is we have such bad gut flora because our gut is able to actually break it down and excrete it out of our bodies. But because our guts right now are in a state that, um, you know, your average person doesn't really have a healthy gut, that's where like the mercury content can be a little bit that we have to Mm. be a little bit more careful and mindful. But if you're someone who's very healthy, you have a whole food you know, whole food macro balanced diet, you eat uh, a variety of foods, your gut is in excellent health, then you don't really need to worry about the mercury levels. Um, So that would be another thing, the fish. And if you're really conscious about the sustainability and the environment, sardines is a great option. Mm. Um, So I don't know if I have time for one more myth, but- uh, Go for it. Awesome. So one more myth that I like to talk about, and this one can be really short, is that some people come see me and they're like, oh, you know, I have to stop exercising. I'm pregnant. I heard that it was dangerous to exercise. Okay, so this is completely false. It's not if you continue to exercise, it's not um, associated with things people hear is like increased um, infertility or miscarriage, preterm delivery. You know, these are the things we hear. Um, This is false false, it's actually recommended for moms um, to engage in at least 30 minutes of exercise uh, about three to four times a week. And we're not talking about, you know, someone who's never exercises, and then all of a sudden, they're going to take up running and run a half marathon in their pregnancy. That's not what we're saying at all. But what we're saying is if you already ran before you got pregnant, it's okay to continue running in pregnancy. The only thing you have to be mindful is to not push yourself um, and, and overdoing it because that could be harmful to baby and always to make sure to stay very hydrated. And if you're exercising in a place where it's very hot or humid, this is what you need to be careful of. Um, but things like walking, swimming, you know, as long as you can have a normal conversation while you're exercising, continue exercising. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's super important. Um, I remember that's one of the things that my midwives brought up with my first pregnancy is they go over that piece because I think a lot of, a lot of women think that it's dangerous to exercise Mm -hmm. and that's really sad. And, uh, you know, even with my twin pregnancy, I feel like even though I knew all this stuff, like it was healthy to exercise because of the much higher risk of preterm delivery with twins, I still had the fear. Like I had the fear of not doing too much and not, you know, yeah, like there was so much weight I was carrying. I was afraid that I was gonna, you know, and it was hard to exercise anyway, but of course. And, then, and you exactly. So it's a matter of not overdoing it, right? Yeah. You want to listen to your body. If you're exactly. in your first or second trimester and you feel like you can have a light jog because you were running before your pregnancy and you feel good, then do it. But if you go out and you know you're you're bouncing up and down, it makes you making you feel nauseous and you're having a headache and so on, well, listen to your body and maybe go for a swim or go for a walk instead. Right? Yeah. I love that. Like just keeping that intuition as the number one yeah. leader for yourself. Like 
take a moment, see what you need. Sometimes a brisk walk is what you need because there's so much lying around that happens when we're pregnant (laughs) and eating, unless you have many other kids, in which case that's impossible. So, (laughs) um, (laughs) okay. Thank you for that. That was super, super useful and important. Um, and, um, let's keep going here. That was amazing. So I know you do a prenatal nutrition course for moms. Uh, I don't know if you still do that, but give us a couple of hottest tips in terms of making sure you're doing the right thing to nourish you and your baby. And maybe a little bit more about postpartum as well, because you know how to, I don't know, maybe there's some tips of how to like, keep that mood up, keep our brains Mm -hmm. working, stay out of the mom brain fog, especially when we're getting no sleep. Yeah, for sure. Um, so just on that, I do, uh, teach prenatal, uh, workshops there, there are sometimes three hour workshops. So you can imagine how much information I provide in those. (laughs) And then I also offer a three hour postpartum, uh, workshop as well. So it's certainly what we're going to talk about right now is really like in a nutshell, because when I do the the workshops I really go in depth as to how to support moms, both prenatally in and in postpartum. Um, but here's some, you know, a few tips that uh, can hopefully support, uh, and get people thinking. Um, So the first thing, and I know this sounds a little silly and and people might say, well, yeah, that's obvious, but we have to remind this to people, uh, especially when I get them to do food logs and I see what people are actually eating. um, It's important to be reminded of this. And that is to eat a whole food macro balanced diet. Um, Stay away as much as possible from packaged foods, sugars, Um, all all the the processed foods, you know, you pick up a package and there's 15 ingredients and you can't really pronounce half of them. These are the kinds of foods that we want to stay away from. We want to eat whole foods. And yes, this applies for everybody on a daily basis, even when we're not pregnant, Uh, but even more important when we're pregnant because we're supporting, you know, a little human and in postpartum because we need to be nourished when in postpartum because we're taking care of a little human and we're depleted because we've just given birth so we've lost a lot of iron uh baby has used up a lot of our nutrients our hormones are all out of whack okay so this is a period where we want to really nourish ourselves and how we're going to do that is to eat whole foods so complex carbohydrates not the sugary white stuff complex carbs quinoa uh, buckwheat wild rice uh, fruits vegetables right and staying away from like white bread and white rice and you know all those bland white foods that give us calories but give us absolutely nothing else um and when you so say that- macro balance what does that mean Yeah, so macro balance would mean that we eat a snack or a meal that has uh, uh, carbohydrates. And this is sometimes people are like, ooh, carbs, but carbs are bad. Mm, No, carbohydrates are not bad. If you put carbohydrates in a category of bad, that means that you're saying that fruits and vegetables are bad because Mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables are carbohydrates, right? We just want to stick to complex carbohydrates and stay away from the simple carbs like white bread, white, you know, sugar Mm -hmm. and and all that 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 I've mentioned. So when we talk about macro balance, we're really looking at um, a meal or a snack that has complex carbohydrates, that has um, some protein and some healthy fat. Mm -hmm. And so if we're talking about a snack, it can be as simple as an apple with a handful of almonds. There you go. You've got your uh, complex carbohydrates in the apple. You've got your protein and your fat in the nuts. And you also, one thing is um, that I didn't mention is the fiber. And that would be part of the apple as well. So it doesn't have to be complicated. When we say macro balance, we're talking about something that has all three categories of the macronutrients. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be complicated. Even something like a salad with a piece of fish or an egg and some um, some olive oil on top. There you go. That's macro balance. You've got all three key components in your in your meal. Um, so if we stick to that as a, as kind of a rule of thumb, that's a really good way of of having a, a healthy diet. And another thing we need to um, 
to think about is um, to really move our bodies because nutrition is a key component. And of course, as a holistic nutritionist, I'm going to talk a lot about food and nutrition, but I'm also a holistic nutritionist. So I also um, emphasize and talk about the importance of moving your body and as well of taking care of your mental health. And so things like, you know, yoga, mindfulness, relaxation uh, techniques, community, um, being part of, um, of different um, maybe an, or, an organization association a mom group just you know keeping uh, your community going that's all part of it as as well especially when it comes to mental health yeah the whole package right not just like yeah what are the supplements I need this month and like what are the things that I need to order or buy in the grocery store it's like yeah what 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 is your day feeling like like what is mm-hmm. weighing, weighing heavily on you what are some of the supports that you can bring forth that can uplift you a little bit or give you that much needed break. Right. It's like nutrition is really a part of a big holistic picture. And it's almost impossible to talk about well-being without nutrition, but then you can't talk about just nutrition without the other stuff as well. So exactly. All goes beautifully together with holistic health. Yeah. That was really useful. I'm guessing that in your course, you talk in a lot more detail about, you know, here are some easy recipes, here are things that you can um, do and put together very quickly that, like you said, don't have to be hard, literally like put some almond butter on apple, like, here you go, you're good. Um, So yeah, I love that. It's all about making things accessible for moms because we don't got time to make things complicated or for recipes, like we just don't. Um, (laughs) So I love that. Um, yeah, so you mentioned mental health. So let's talk about that a little bit more deeply because I feel like a lot of moms right now are looking for mental health solutions that are accessible, relatable, and, you know, holistic, right? They may not, um, they may not want to reach for going to the doctor right away. They might not be feeling that bad, you know, in the beginning, they just want to see like, okay, what are the three or four things I could do right now Mm -hmm. every day to kind of like stabilize my mood, to let go of some of that burnout and stress feeling on a daily basis. Um, especially with the monotony of motherhood, you know, that kind of happens day in day out and all kind of all the days merge together. Um, so yeah. So from a nutrition perspective, what is one of the most important things, um, moms can't forget to do for themselves? Um, especially when they're feeling that anxiety and stress, um, quite a bit throughout the week. Yeah. So again, I'm going to emphasize the whole food sort of macro balanced diet, moving your body, uh, reaching out for support and, and being part of a community. So that's kind of like the, the key pieces. Um, but if you're thinking about really long-term, um, like I mentioned, eating complex carbohydrates, um, and also having a variety of complete proteins and healthy fats, but also avoiding, you know, sugar and sugar containing foods and eliminating everything that's like trans and processed fats, anything that's like canola oil, vegetable oil, fried foods, those really, really uh, impact the digestive and the immune system. So just staying away from those as much as possible. And to be quite honest with you, healthy fats like olive oil and avocado oil taste delicious, right? So if you're going to make yourself a salad, you wouldn't want to put vegetable oil or canola oil on it anyways. Or even if you're making a dish, um, it's way more tastier to eat the healthy oils anyways. So just making that a habit. uh, And the more you you stick to something, the more it'll be part of your habits. Um, It takes the human body or the human beings take about seven days to get a habit out the door, right? It doesn't take us that long. So you just have to stick to something for about a week. And then it can be just part of what you always do. Um, and then one thing that people tend to do is um, forget breakfast or skipping breakfast, especially when you're pregnant and in postpartum, when um, you don't have time sometimes throughout the day to take care of yourself. One of the, the key things is to start off your day with a very nutritious breakfast because if things kind of go downhill throughout the day and you're not able to eat a nutritious meal or or keep up with healthy snacks at least you start your day with something nutritious so I always tell my moms at least have a healthy breakfast and if that means you know preparing your overnight oats before you go to bed or if it means just throwing a bunch of healthy stuff in your in your blender to make a smoothie with some protein powder so you have like a nice 
30 grams of protein to start your day. Um, but breakfast would be a really good way to start as opposed to just, you know, having a coffee with a granola bar or something that right away, you're starting off your day with like, a, you're going to have a big dip really fast. Uh, so breakfast. And then um, in terms of supplements, it's, it's a hard thing for me to talk about supplements, I find, because they're so specific to individuals. But some amino acids can be really, really beneficial. So things like tryptophan is really good to boost mood. Um, glutamine is really good for memory. So those are amino acids that tend to be um, recommended in, in postpartum specifically. But again, we have to be really careful with amino acids in terms of because they affect people differently. So it's better to consult a healthcare practitioner before you kind of go the amino acids route. Uh, but those are definitely um, interesting options. Things that are a little bit more general and off the shelf and that is a little less specific and that you can try to see if it works for you. Um, a B supplement like a um, a B complex, those tend to be very helpful, uh, specifically for, for mental health. Um, folate, zinc, choline, these are all really good uh, for mental health. So upping any food that is high in those or even taking a multivitamin that contains those specifically. And then the last thing would be um, omega-3. But for pregnancy and postpartum, specifically we're looking at DHA. So there are two types of omega threes, there's EPA and DHA. And if you're just, you know, your average person who's looking to support mental health, I would say just take a fish oil that contains EPA and DHA. But for pregnancy specifically, it's important to, to look at the uh, fish oils that are high in DHA, because this is what you really, really need in pregnancy. And in your third trimester specifically, baby will take up so much of your DHA that if you don't supplement, that's when you're going to be very depleted in postpartum. And there is a link between uh, depleted DHA and postpartum depression. There's a link there. So ensuring that we're very, very, um, um, we, we have lots of, we're very replenished in terms of our DHA levels, that's crucial. For people who are vegan or vegetarian, there are some algae-based options. Um, the only thing is our body, when we have it in fish oil, we're able to use up the DHA directly from the fish oil, contrary to an algae-based where we need to do a conversion. And sometimes if we're already depleted in a bunch of other nutrients, our body may not be able to do that full conversion and then we don't end up with as much DHA as we need. So this is the advantage of taking a fish oil. If, you know, I've had some clients who are vegan or vegetarian who do not eat fish, but in their pregnancy, they're willing to take some DHA um, mm. to support themselves and in postpartum as well. Uh, just because at some point, you know, you have to do what's right uh, for, for yourself. Yeah. Some people are like, no, I'm not doing fish. You know, these are my values and I'm not going to go the fish oil route then great, you know, you, that's fine. If, if that's not what you want to do, there are some great options, but you just have to be a little bit more mindful to have a very, um, again, macro balanced diet and perhaps take a, another supplement and a multivitamin to ensure that your, your body is able to do that conversion to mm. DHA. And I think one last little thing I would say on that is if you're looking for instant relief, because everything I've talked about now is more things that will work kind of long-term through pregnancy yeah. and into the postpartum. Yeah. But if you're in the postpartum period and you're feeling really, you know, you're having, you're irritable, you're, you're feeling, you know, borderline depressed, like not, not depressed to the point where, you know, you need a medical consultation, but you're feeling really down, really low, and you're looking for some tools to support yourself. Um, the DHA will, will absolutely, you can use that as a, you know, in, to help instantly. Um, and you can take that and over the course of a few weeks, you'll, you'll probably see a difference. And some of the things that can also help are um, magnesium, mm -hmm. and magnesium for, for the stress. So if you're very stressed, magnesium can support for that. It can help for insomnia as well. Um, so I would go for magnesium glycinate. 
And then the last thing would be uh, adaptogens and herbs. Um, so yeah, that yeah. specifically, it's better to consult. Again, you, you don't want to just start taking a bunch of things without having information about it. Um, so there's always uh, people who are trained naturopathic doctors and herbalists who can specifically recommend things that, that can work for you. Uh, but there are some lovely adaptogens now that are easily accessible via, for example, there's like reishi mushroom hot chocolate, and there's all these different things that you can purchase that has some adaptogens in them and just having a little bit of that can make a big difference personally if I take a drop of the ashwagandha tincture in my water I'm just like I'm so relaxed I'm, I absorb it very easily so I'm really relaxed but people have to find things that work for them right so in just one sentence can you explain what adaptogen means it's a herb right that will help your nervous system right yeah well it's not adaptogens are not actually just herbs, just herbs um yes. but it, but essentially adaptogens it, it, they're fascinating i anybody who's listening to this just go look up adaptogens it's phenomenal how they react in your body basically an adaptogen is a chemical compound that will change or adapt in your body based on what your body needs so someone who will take an adaptogen that like they're their chemistry is a little bit out of whack and, and needs relaxation, the adaptogen will actually calm them. And someone who's on the other extreme, who's like really like, uh, uh, you know, really feeling like crazy and bubbly, it will calm them. I don't know if I just said that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, I think you're opposite. trying to say yeah. if you have like so, low energy, it yeah, will. Exactly, it'll give you a boost. I was like, I think I just repeated myself <laughs> twice. That's but essentially fine. an adaptogen will really, it, the name says it, it will adapt in your body based yeah, on what yeah. your body needs. It's phenomenal. This, this, that is fascinating. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So using those are, are a good option as this is good for um, instant relief or instant support. Yeah. So someone who's feeling generally good and they have a day where they're like, oh God, this is a bad day. Then just using those as tools for like instant relief that can support. Um, and of course, everything, sunshine, nature, you know, going out and, and being with people, um, making sure you're sleeping. So if baby's sleeping, sleep, have a nap, you know, so there's, yeah. there's a lot of other components, um, not just food and supplements that uh, we need to be mindful of as well. Awesome. Thanks for that. That was a lot of very useful, incredible information. i um, just going to quickly summarize like the ones that stuck with me was definitely the breakfast piece. Um, you know, mornings can be super chaotic. So if you have to have a breakfast plan where you've like pre-prepared a meal for yourself and stuck it in the fridge, like a, you know, overnight oats or something, or you're like, tell your spouse, like, listen, you got to make me breakfast. Cause I will not have time to take care of myself. Um, or you just, you know, make one big batch of omelet for you and everyone, all your kids. Yeah, definitely important. Definitely something I'm having a hard time getting into my day now that I'm, you know, no longer breastfeeding. I'm like, Oh, I don't have to eat that great anymore. But it's like, no, I still have to eat great because I still have to maintain my energy um, yeah. throughout the day. And like that protein is super important, especially first thing in the morning. So yeah, that breakfast piece is huge. Um, the fish oil. I know I've been leaning into that a lot just for like ongoing maintenance and definitely the adaptogens, um, have definitely helped me, um, and the amino amino acids just for that, you know, uh, in the moment anxiety, um, really extreme in the moment stress or, um, yeah, definitely like I'm having a shit day and this, what do I do about it kind of feeling? So mm -hmm. yeah, those are definitely helped me and they've helped, you know, a lot of people I know, but let's talk about, you know, just hearing this information right now for people listening right now, you know, may want to just like go online, order a bunch of supplements, start taking them. Like, we just want to talk about the risks of Googling as well. Um, and not just Googling, but like applying things without an actual guided plan from a practitioner. Um, so let's just like go a little bit into that because there's a reason people hire doulas, even though when you give birth, you give birth by yourself the baby comes back through your, like comes through your body and you are the one giving birth. However, people hire doulas for that, uh, physical support one-on-one, -on -one, but we, they also hire them to get rid of and filter through all that noise that happens when you're bombarded with information about birth or birth culture, or 
everything surrounding birth, you know? So Mm -hmm. let's talk about that in the realm of nutrition as well. Like how to make sure that you're actually getting the support that you need to have a plan for yourself and not just wild Googling and trying to figure it out yourself. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's very similar. I think you've pretty much pinpointed it right now with the with the doula piece where um, there's just so much information online. And if you're trying to find, for example, you decide that you're going to take um, a B supplement and you just go online and order a random B supplement. Um, how do you know that, you know, that is the right one? How do you know that the ingredients that they use uh, are not all this synthetic garbage. Um, There's a lot of supplement companies out there that they don't care about the quality of the ingredients. They just care about making money. And so they're just going to take the lowest quality stuff into their supplement and then sell it at the cheapest price. So as many people as possible buy their vitamin B, for example. Um, So at least if you're able to talk to, you know, a nutritionist or another healthcare practitioner, a naturopathic doctor, they're able to provide you with um, the brands of companies that are trustworthy and that have quality ingredients. Um, One thing I would certainly say, if you're going to go off on your own and buy supplements, do avoid places like, you know, the big, the big stores and the the pharmacies and and things like that and stick to the natural food stores, because that's where they tend to have um, the, the practitioner grade brands. Mm -hmm. Um, And also what's cool is a lot of the natural food stores will have a lot of the the local brands. Um, There's a lovely magnesium glycinate that I use and it's a company from Ottawa, which is really neat. And I know that company and I know that they have quality ingredients, right? So from one, from one standpoint is, is knowing, you know, what to buy because there's a lot of garbage out there. And the other thing too is, um, again, I'll talk about as an example of supplements is if you're going to buy a supplement, like how do you know if you need magnesium citrate or magnesium glycinate? Well, yeah, you can Google it. But again, if you Google that, different websites will tell you different things. Like on one site, it'll tell you take magnesium citrate for insomnia. And then on another site, it'll say take magnesium glycinate for insomnia. And then you're like, oh, well, which one do I take? Right. So um, if we're supporting you, you know, as a nutritionist, as a holistic nutritionist, if I'm supporting you and recommending a supplement, I know your health history. I know exactly what you're looking for. I know if you've had any other symptoms, you know, if maybe you have um, certain symptoms, maybe I won't recommend a specific, um, uh, you know, a specific yeah. Uh, type of supplement or even when we're looking at probiotics right like probiotics have so yeah. many strains um so how do we know what to so look many. for and uh, you know as a nutritionist i can say oh well i have my sheet uh with exactly all the strains and exactly what you need what strain for but if you go online it's like woo, there's a million sites with the um so yeah just having the the right information and and if you have a healthcare practitioner supporting you then you can trust them that the information they have is from evidence-based you know research and books and so on um and also what to bring it back to what i said at the beginning is everyone is biochemically individual Mm -hmm. and something that will work with one person may not work with someone else um and so when we go on google it tends to be very like this is what you should do (laughs) yeah it's like shooting in the dark it's kind of like you have all the information but you don't know how biochemically individual you are necessarily unless somebody mm-hmm. kind of does a little analysis of you and yeah kind of tells you like these are the things that really nourish you right now yeah um, so yeah that's and yeah and another thing is you feel overwhelmed and even personally yeah. when when I have something when if I'm feeling you know if I have I don't know nausea or I'm feeling really down over a period of time well I don't try to like self-diagnose myself or you know I know so much I could be like okay well I'm going to take vitamin d Mm -hmm. and uh, fish oil and some vitamin c and you know once in a while I'll do that but if I have kind of a more of a chronic thing going on I don't try to like resolve my own issues I go and see another nutritionist or I go see an ND because they'll be able to give me a small plan with a list of okay here's what to do tick 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 as opposed to like me knowing all that I know and then trying to like apply everything to myself and then I'm like "Ah, I don't know where to start right so seeing someone else will give you that structured uh in French we say l'encadrement you know that you need that support and that also the the ongoing support the check-ins 
right? Which yes. when we're helping ourselves, we don't have that. And then sometimes we just give up or not really continue. Or, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And in that realm, I want to say that like in the beginning, you might be like, oh, I can't afford this. But honestly, you're going to save so much money down the line. You're going to be, otherwise you're buying like thousands of random supplements that you don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And in the end, you just don't want to take them because you could just feel like you're popping pills all day. Like you, you really need a structured plan. And yeah, did you hear that ladies, even nutritionists and naturopaths go see other naturopaths and nutritionists because you need that external perspective, right? Yeah. You need somebody who's not you because you're too close to you sometimes. And you just, <laughs> you can't always self-diagnose everything or anything. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes That's we right. can sometimes we're really intuitive right we're like yes. I feel crappy this absolutely gonna help me you know mm-hmm. and the more you do it and the more like I have clients where I'll support them for a couple years and then like I don't hear from them anymore and I reach out and they're like I'm doing great. Like, I don't really have anything. So that's the thing too, is like having that support for a while. And then eventually you just become very intuitive with what you need and what supplements work for you and what foods work for you. Um, what exercises work for you or what yoga works for you or, or whatever your tools are, you know? So on that note of like, it's actually also kind of like a doula, right? Because you're like doulas in the postpartum time we're there for our clients. And then we slowly want to wean them off us. This is kind of similar, right? Like they don't yeah. need to anymore. They're like, I got it. Like I got yeah. it, which is great. Um, so on that note, um, how do you recommend people go about look like looking for a nutritionist, know that they're qualified, know that they have all the information that, that, you know, that they are supposed to have, like, you know, you can get a nutritionist degree in like a two week course or a three year course, like three year program. So how do people know how to hire a nutritionist? Give us a little breakdown, like easy, like steps. Yeah, for sure. For. So, I mean, here in Canada, um, you could go to the Canadian school of natural nutrition, um, alumni, they, there's a website and then you can search nutritionists on there. Uh, we do have to be really careful, but because exactly what you're saying, sometimes I get so frustrated when I go online and I see like on Facebook, like become a, um, a nutrition practitioner or get a diploma in nutrition in this one week online program. And I'm like, what, (laughs) you know, like I, I have, like, I have the, the, the holistic nutritionist program is a diploma um, program. So it's a college level program. Um, and it takes, you can do it accelerated in one year or regular time in two years. And so it's not a one week uh, online program. And so definitely when you're hiring a, a nutritionist, if you want to make sure that you're getting the, the proper information, then uh, going with the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition uh, alumni can be a good option. Um, But quite frankly, I I find that usually it's just through word of mouth. So I have a lot, a lot of clients who uh, will refer me or, you know, through word of mouth, there people will say like, or you go to a nutritionist, let's say in a clinic, and they'll say, oh, well, I don't specialize in, in that, in digestive health, but this nutrition does. And then they give the contact information. So I find that it's often through word of mouth. Um, but yeah, just ensuring that you're not just kind of like Googling and finding people. You can also look for the registered holistic nutritionist logo on the website. Uh, we do have that certification logo. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. That's important to know that you're hiring someone that, that, you know, if you can't get a referral, I mean, referrals are great because you know, you've got Facebook now there's mom groups. You can ask for referrals. Ask. And, Absolutely. Yeah, always ask. Exactly. Um, awesome. So let's just talk about all of the diet trends that are coming and going. I feel like on the one hand, we're moving in the right direction because people are encouraging whole foods, you know, in terms of keto and paleo and stuff like that, like whole foods, healthy fats, um, all these things, you know, removing processed junk. However, on the other side, it all comes with this label and it's also very narrow. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering kind of what is the problem with that? Because I think a lot of moms tend to go into the postpartum period, maybe if a year or so uh, after in the year or so postpartum, they might feel like, Oh, maybe like I want to lose a little bit more weight or I want to get fit again. Like I'm going to go on this diet. Like that's the solution to everything. So Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering what are your views on that? And how to navigate that whole world of constant 
new realms of, yeah. I, I don't want to say diet culture because it seems like it is kind of diet culture, but it's, it is more holistic sounding now. So it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to call it like, yeah, but it's still, it's yourself, still a diet. You know? cu- yeah. But it's still a diet culture. It, is, yeah. and it still puts people in this kind of category of like, oh, I'm going to do this diet because yeah. it, it's going to make me lose weight. Right. right. Um, so I think I, I, I'll probably keep this quite brief because we could probably go on for a long time about this topic. But I think what I want to say around that is, um, again, bringing it back to biochemical individuality and one diet that works for one person will not work for another person. So even if, you know, you hear a story, oh my gosh, my cousin went on this diet and they lost like 30 pounds. Well, first of all, great. They lost 30 pounds, but one, that diet might not work for your body. And two, well, maybe that wasn't a sustainable diet. And although they lost 30 pounds quickly, it will not be sustainable. And within a year or two, they'll just be back to square one. Um, And quite frankly, diets that make you lose weight quickly are not good. They're not good for your body. They're not good for long-term sustainability or health. Um, Our body is really meant to do things slowly, um, one step at a time. So if your goal is to lose weight um, because you you, you were a certain weight um, years ago and now you're if you're five pounds over, then, you know, that's normal. We we should like, when we're pregnant, we should get some extra fat. And as we go into menopause, we will get a little bit of extra fat and that's normal and healthy. Um, But if, you know, for some reason you've gone into unhealthy habits and you ended up being 40, 50 pounds more than you used to be, and you've decided that you want to have healthier patterns and lose that, that weight, then that's great, but you're going to have to do it in a way that works for you. And you have to do it slowly because if you just jump into a diet and try to lose the weight quickly, that that is not going to be sustainable. And so just to kind of conclude on on the whole diet thing is one diet that will work for someone may not work for you. And the problem too, is a lot of these diets, although they're like, oh, great. Like this diet is like low carbs, high fat, high protein. Well, guess what? Vegetables are carbs. Mm -hmm. So I am not a big pusher of low carb diets because tons of the food I eat is high in carbs because I eat a lot of vegetables, right? So we really have to, at the end of the day, if we want to lose weight or be healthier, it's all about finding that balance in both what we eat and how we move our bodies. And it will come with time, patience. Mm-hmm. Have, have the long-term goal in mind, have like the long-term vision, right? Vision, like- yeah. Yeah, have a vision and I have great want. success mm-hmm. with my with my clients who want to lose weight. Everyone that I work with, like on long term basis, one I have clients now that I've been working with for you know a year, two years, and they're doing great and they've lost a lot of weight. But it wasn't in the first month or the first three months. It was slow, but now they're able to maintain that, and they've changed so many of their um, of their like their day-to-day slowly and surely their habits that now it's just part of their routine and part of their life right Mm -hmm. that's amazing that was awesome I yeah highly resonate with that and I found over the years that not only does does not one diet not work for everyone like obviously we're all individual right we talked about that throughout this whole interview if it, there's only one thing that you take away from this whole talk it should be that like you are your own individual human but not only that throughout the different stages of your life especially those childbearing years that is crazy right because i, mm-hmm. I had a diet that was plant based that worked for my whole life until i started having children And then I felt like I was starving and I felt like I was depleted and malnourished. So Mm -hmm. at that point I realized this is a different time of my life. This is how I'm going to need to eat. Now I'm going to have to eat nutrient dense. Um, and it's going to have to continue throughout those childbearing breastfeeding years. Um, breastfeeding years are very challenging for me because I became sick of food, you know, like I, I just had to eat so much of it. And Um, foods that I wasn't necessarily interested in eating, but I knew were good for me and replenishing my stores and good for the baby. So um, that's also a huge one, right? Um, And then as you get older and you age, also you will change. And the interesting thing is you don't necessarily have to like 
research, every time you get into a new stage, it's like your body will tell you like right now, after the breastfeeding phase is over, I'm just not craving certain things that I used to, you know, like there's just, your body will just be like, Oh, those are not my needs anymore. And I'm heading towards more of like a plant forward type diet while still loving and enjoying those other nourishing things at a lower quantity. So yeah, absolutely. Tap into that tap into your intuition. Yeah. Listening to our body. And sometimes we, that's a thing we like block it out or we have these habits that make our body or make us think that we want or crave different things. So Mm. if we're craving or needing protein, well, we're so used to like munching on chips or cookies when we feel that, that that's what we'll do. But the more you change your habits and the more you listen to your body, the more you will understand what your body is asking for. Ah, I like that. Can you say that again? Yeah. The more you listen. The more you listen to your body, the more you will start to know what your body needs. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. And I think in the beginning, it can be hard because you're like, am I craving sugar because like my brain or I'm addicted to sugar or am I craving sugar Mm. because my body just needs that right now or I need a boost or whatever, you know, it's kind of hard in the beginning, but then the more you like change your diet and like become, you know, just have a more healthful nutrient dense diet, the more you realize, Oh no, I actually don't need that right now. It's just sitting there and I don't have to engage. So that's awesome. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up soon. I just want to know if there's any final things you want moms to know, um, in terms of staying sane in this like really uncertain world, um, <laughs> you know, is there a final word of advice or something that you want to say to moms yeah. right now all over the world? We're going through this <laughs> for sure. Um, I think at the end of the day, what we need to be very mindful of is that there are so many, when it comes to pregnancy and the postpartum period, there's just so many, um, unrealistic expectations. Mm. And then that tends to lead, um, us to really ignore the, this period in our lives where we really need to be resting and recovering. Because like I said earlier, when after you've given birth, you're very depleted, right? You lose a lot of iron, you lose a lot of your nutrient stores, and then you're tired, you're not sleeping, you're breastfeeding. So there's so much going on. And we should really, really be focusing on resting, recovering, replenishing. Mm -hmm. It's really a time that is going to be vital for our emotional well-being, like longer term, as well as our physical recovery. And of course, bonding like with our babies, right? So I know so many women that push too much, too fast, too soon. And on top of that are not always eating the most nourishing foods. And so they become exhausted, they become depressed or physically suffering. And it's really not something you want to mess around with because that's what's going to lead with things like postpartum depression and um, with you having mental health issues like longer term as well and so you really really have to ensure that right from the beginning when you're pregnant you really need to focus on yourself Um, think about how you want to nourish yourself how you want to take care of yourself find resources to support you, whether that's a doula or a nutritionist, or maybe it's people in your community. Maybe you have family who is there for you to make you meals um, and to support you with baby and maybe to be there when you go and have a nap or whatnot, but make sure that you have things in place to support you throughout your pregnancy and in postpartum, because that will really, really make a difference um, down the line. And the reality is that once you have a baby, this is like uncharted territory, right? Like you've never been there, especially if it's your first baby. Like once you have your baby, it's just like, you have to adjust so many things for so many months. And even when we have a second baby, right. It's, you know, we're used to certain things, but there's still lots of, lots of adjustments that uh, need to be made. So really just 
make sure that you take care of yourself, whatever that means for you, whether it means getting meals made for you in, in pregnancy. So you have so much food in postpartum or finding those resources that are in place so that once you give birth, you're well supported or taking that DHA fish oil, you know, whatever it is, just make sure you take care of yourself. Um, because if you wait too late, if you wait too, too long, then that's where, you know, you're going to crash. Yeah. That's beautiful. Definitely lean into the rest and the nourishment and the support. Please lean into the support. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, there's people in our lives that are willing to help us, but we maybe are not even willing to ask, or maybe there's something there that, you know, needs resolving that we don't feel comfortable asking. If you're going to ask for help ever, this is the time, you know, yeah. like postpartum time. You <laughs> want to do that like now, like at that point, yeah. because you just you just need to lean into the support as much yeah. as you can. If someone is offering, take it, you know, mm -hmm. take it. Um yeah. and you're gonna kind of work through that as it comes. And yeah, that's definitely something that has saved my life for sure mm. over this last couple of years and the extreme twin pregnancy and postpartum chaos. So yeah, definitely yeah. saved my life um, without that support and without all that amazing love and support from doulas and family, I would probably not be where I am right now. Like my mental health mm -hmm. is still all right. I'm not going to say amazing, but it's all right <laughs> for the most part, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't last forever. Exactly. But, but when you're in the thick of it, it's no joke. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. So thank you for all that valuable, incredible advice and information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a bit of a cut video that's more short and succinct on my page and my um, group. And then we're going to have a t I'm going to have a telegram group where I have the full interview where you're able to watch and record all of the incredible advice that Kat has given us today. It's been absolutely amazing. And I'm so grateful you came on here. And I feel like there are so many other topics we could talk about with regards to nutrition we could talk for hours. So hopefully throughout this year, we'll have, you know, two more, maybe three more different talks that we want to discuss that are more narrow and specific. Mm -hmm. I want to start out with something a little bit more general and kind of get to know you a little bit and where you're coming from. So people can get to know Kat and, um, yeah. And let's leave off with a last tidbit of something that you love to do for fun that has nothing to do with nutrition. And then we'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, I love to do a lot of things. <laughs> I'm one of these people who just want to do everything. I'm uh, I'm always up to trying new things, and I'm I'm the first to sign up when something new comes along. But I'm gonna go, and I've talked about this actually throughout the presentation. But I'm gonna go with my yoga. So I I do awesome. hot yoga, and it's definitely my happy place. So I tend to go, you know, three to five times a week. And it's, it's been kind of hard with COVID in the last few years, in the last couple of years, because the, the studio has been, you know, closing, opening, closing, yeah. opening. So it's been trying to like, yay, yeah. it's open. And you go back to your happy place and then, oh, it's closed. Okay. I'll try to do hot yoga at home. Yeah. And, you know, you never really pump do the, the thermostat. <laughs> you yeah, pump up the thermostat and then, you know, you're doing a video. So you're not really motivated to do the full hour so then you just do 20 minutes but yeah. uh, but I have to say yoga just it keeps me keeps me sane and, and really happy so awesome thank you again Kat for being here I'm going to post um Kat's information in the comments below and feel free to reach out for more health tips and advice and um you know if you would like to work with Kat. She is open for that. So um, thank you so much for being here and let's keep doing this because this was super fun and awesome. Yeah, it and was. <laughs> thank you. Mwah.